now present for the record. Just ahead. This is my courtroom. Right. The man leading the assembly's election investigation is held in contempt of court. And that's just one part of Wisconsin politics this week. I hadn't seen anything quite like this. Plus, as the federal school lunch waiver program winds down this month, how local groups are trying to fill the gap. We've got vegetables, we've got a main meal, so a sandwich and milk, and they all go together in a bag. But first... Unfortunately, this bill did not get a hearing. Why Wisconsin has no plan to replace those federal waivers. Welcome to For the Record, I'm Naomi Coles. At the end of June, the country reverts to a pre-pandemic system where school children either pay all or part of their lunches unless their families can submit paperwork proving they qualify for free lunch. Joining me now is Democratic State Representative Christina Shelton, who earlier this year introduced a bill that would make the expanded lunch waiver program permanent in Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So let's start with what the bill would do. How does this bill make this program permanent? So this bill would ensure that every child in the state of Wisconsin would have access to a free breakfast and free lunch every single day at no cost to families. It would take action at the state level uh, to ensure that we don't go backwards. These waivers were put in place in March of 2020 in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we've seen um, is something that we were told couldn't happen before. And that was that we could simply feed all kids. And the outcomes and the impacts of the waivers over the past two, two and a half years have been outstanding. And so we believe it's time for the state of Wisconsin to take action to make sure we don't go backwards and to make sure that our kids are fed and ready to learn every single day when they show up in the classroom. Did this bill get a hearing? And if not, was, was there any just informal signs of Republican support? Unfortunately, this bill did not get a hearing. Uh, the uh, committee chairman to which it was assigned has said in the past that he doesn't think that there's a need to take this bill up. Um, and what we are hearing from school districts, uh, parents, kids, uh, community uh, leaders who work on food insecurity and hunger are telling us otherwise. So what we have done in response to failed action in the legislature is to build an army of food champions. We have the Healthy School Meals for All Coalition, which right now has over 80 statewide uh, members who are working to advance this, whether it's at the state level with the Healthy School Meals for All bill, whether it be uh, through federal action, we are encouraging and meeting with our federal delegates, such as Senator Tammy Baldwin. Um, and we're also working on the ground level with school boards and individual school districts to take action. Just this morning, I met with a local Green Bay school district who is very interested in this bill. So we are organizing around this issue because it is not going away. Now, the Republican argument here is that this bill is unnecessary. Going back to the pre-pandemic system works where some students get pay full price, some pay reduced, and then others, you know, have to submit paperwork to prove that they can qualify for free. I guess, what's your response to that argument? Well, what we knew before uh, COVID was that the current system, the previous system, wasn't working. That that's just not true. Uh, the the um, requirement for families to fill out free and reduced meal uh, applications is incredibly burdensome to working families. People don't want to uh, fill out the forms because they don't want the stigma of free and reduced. There's a number of families that don't necessarily qualify for free and reduced, but still face food and uh, food insecurity. But we also know that districts are facing, um, they're facing uh, food stigma, but also lunch shaming and school meal debts. So we know that this is, um, a, this is a solution that will enhance learning for all kids. We believe all means all. And the research backs it up. It is so incredibly clear. When all kids have access to meals, absenteeism goes down, tardiness goes down, trips to the nurse goes down, behavior improves. There's also some links to academic achievement, both in math and reading. Um, so the benefits extend well beyond uh, the classroom into community. Another point that we raise as well is that this is about community investment. Local farmers and growers have been talking to us about the economic boom that they've seen because school districts need to uh, have access to more fresh fruits and vegetables and lettuce and carrots. So this is a widespread program that will have so many benefits across the state that um, we again believe that it's the right thing to do. 
Now, absent, now, this program ends end of this month, absent any federal uh, interference, right, or any, any federal action. And while there is a movement, you just touched on this, of states trying to make this permanent for themselves, um, absent any legislative action, which is not likely, we're you know in recess right now, the, the state legislature is in recess, um, what are nonprofits or schools doing to perhaps this summer try and expand their reach anyway, absent the, these extra waivers? Well, that's a great question, and I'll say that you know the nutrition waivers expire June 30th. Uh, they have already expired for summer me summer meal programs, and so families and kids are losing access to meals when they need it most, and that's over summer. But districts are scrambling um, to figure out how they can make it work. One of the biggest issues we hear from school districts as food service workers and departments is the f uh, the supply chain issues that they're facing. One of the big issues that this these waivers um, helped districts to work through was when they couldn't have access, when they couldn't access um, whole wheat buns or they couldn't access uh, food that specifically met the requirements of the USDA. These waivers allowed food service departments to be able to work through those uh, shortcomings in the supply chain to still feed kids and to still do what's best for kids. So districts are struggling right now. School boards are looking at having to increase the cost of meals for those that pay for meals. And that is to cover, again, rising food costs, but also uh, labor shortages as well. So what we're seeing uh, is you know folks struggling and trying to make it work, uh, but they are begging for us to take action, whether it's at the state level or at the federal level. Representative, thank you so much for taking a few minutes of your time this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I reached out to the head of the committee who would have given her bill a hearing but didn't hear back. Republican leaders in the legislature have said this year they don't see a reason to replace the waivers since the pre-pandemic system worked. Coming up in a few minutes, Trump-backed GOP governor candidate Tim Michaels will stay on the ballot after a challenge. We'll explain why.